is uh, the actual formula for point slope form. And so that's something that maybe you just want to take your pencil or if you have a highlighter or whatever and highlight that. So what the format for point slope form is, is this. It's going to be y minus y1 equals m, and then in parentheses, x minus x1. Um, and so you can write an equation if without the y-intercept, basically, is what it's telling you. So you can write it using the slope still. you got to have that. And then if you have any ordered pair that would be on that line, you can use it to write an equation. So like your x-coordinate is that x1 here, whatever that ordered pair is, and your y-coordinate would be your y1 that's there, okay? And so if you can find rise over run and you have your one ordered pair, you can write an equation for that. Now normally, uh, they will say uh, write an equation in point slope form or they'll say write an equation in slope intercept form, but if they don't specify on a test, and you have a slope and a point, you can use this way instead of doing all the work to find the y-intercept, okay? So let me show you. A line passes through negative 3, 6 and has a slope of negative 5. And then this one just says what is an equation of the line. It doesn't say what format it has to be in. Well, for us, obviously, we're in point slope chapter, but um, if it doesn't say that, all you have to do is follow this format. You would write this, y, oops, sorry, y minus, and then you take your y coordinate from 6, yep, so y minus 6 equals, and then you follow the formula. Next comes the slope, so that's negative 5, and then it says do a parenthesis, and then x and then it's minus x1. Okay, so here's the one weird thing, right? So if I write minus, and then our x-coordinate is negative 3, right? That does not look right, does it? <laughs> All right, so what's the one thing you kind of have to watch out for? I, I do need to write this a little bit different. What do I need to make that's different? Elvin, go ahead. That's um, you don't need the one before x, but you do change it to a plus. So, so the answer here, the uh, equation that you could use is y minus 6 equal negative 5, and then in parentheses, x plus 3. If they do not specify, you, that is a correct answer right there. Um, and you have to change it to a plus because you don't want minus negative right in there. So that's the first thing, is being able, that's our first objective, is given the slope and given one point to be able to write uh, the equation in point-slope form. Now, the problem with that is you can't type that directly into your calculator, right, for graphing, but could you just add 6, cancel it, and add 6 over here, and then put that in your calculator? Yeah, you can. Uh, to check your answers, especially if you're on, like, any sort of big test, that's what you should do. All right, here we go. Next one. Graphing using point slope form. So that's where I'm going to kind of hit this. So to graph this, right, there's two ways you can do it. One way is to do it by hand. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a quick little graph here. And let's at least do like 7 by 7 if you can. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7. I'm doing 7 by 8, I guess. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we'll sketch ourselves a little graph. Um, and to do it by hand, Sometimes it's actually more accurate than your calculator, uh, but you should use your calculator to check. So what you're doing is if it is in this format, um, what is the ordered pair that you can get from this format? Does anyone know? Cody, go ahead. Two. And that, are you sure it's positive or a negative one? 
positive one, okay? Because right here, this one and this one, this, remember, according to our formula, is x1, but since it's minus, right, it makes it a positive 2. That's the one thing they gotta get, you got to look at is it's kind of opposite because the formula is minus. And same thing here. This is our y1. It's minus, so we make it a positive. So 2, 1, you put that on first. So you go right 2, up 1, make it up. So this is your first point. Okay, what's the slope? Go, Xavier, what is it? Two-thirds. That's right. So our slope is two-thirds. Remember, that means rise two and run three, right? So from this point, if you rise two and run three, and that's all you need to make your graph. And it is accurate, right? So I talked to you about doing this before, and some of you on your homeworks, right, you get docked if you just draw a line without any points on it and it's not detailed enough. That will always be detailed enough. Now, you can check this. If this is, and I'll start it, just what we talked about, how can you put that in your calculator? Emma, go. Yeah, exactly. So you can do this because your calculator, right, only accepts y equals format. That's it. All right. And so you can cancel out that one by adding it to that side and then you can add it to the end as long as you type that in exactly as seen. Now, I think on yours, between the two-thirds and the parentheses, I do think you have to type the time sign in there. Yeah, because otherwise um, it doesn't read it as a times in the graphing calculator. So, but if you do two divided by three times and then parentheses x minus two parentheses plus one, you will get this graph and you will get the table with the ordered pairs and you can check it. Okay. Does everyone understand that? Questions about that part? Okay, cool. All right, next part then. Um, so on here, uh, this is where using um, point slope form is a lot easier. If you take a look at this, so slope intercept form, you need slope and y intercept. Point slope, you only need slope and a point. Is it easy to tell the y intercept exactly on this graph? You would have to estimate, right? Or you would have to use algebra to figure it out. So if it just says to write an equation and your y intercept isn't exactly on an integer, writing it in point slope form is way easier. Now, does it matter which point you use? It does not. Okay, so I'm going to use the point 1, 4 right here, and I'm going to use the format. So going up back up to where we have the format, we start with y. So y, and now since I have two positives, I'm going to say minus for this, okay? So minus, what comes next do you think? Four, yep. So it's y minus y1. So this is x1 and this is y1. All right, equals now. What do I have to put next? M. So do I have to do a little bit of work? Okay, so I got to find rise over run. So it is easiest to do rise over run if you start further left, right? And you get to this one. So my rise, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is my rise. And my run is? One, two, three. So seven over three is my slope. Um, do I have to simplify that or write that differently? Uh, that's seven over three is an improper fraction, but it cannot be reduced. So that's actually the best way to write that. Okay, then you have to do a parenthesis if you're going to do it this way. And then what comes next? 
Is it a number or is it an X? Ah, there we go. X. Then what? Not, then what? Plus or minus? minus. Then what? One. Ooh, see, you guys are geniuses already. It's not that bad to learn this way after you've already learned slope-intercept form. This actually sometimes seems easier. All right, last one then, and I couldn't fit it all on one side here, so sorry. I did a paper-wasting situation. I know. All right, so the last thing is um, to use it this format when you have a table or you have like information in a data plot, okay? So this one says the table shows the altitude of a hot air balloon during its linear descent. Okay, first of all, what's altitude? Height. Height. So like you got it, you're in a hot air balloon, right? And it's a linear descent. What, uh, descent means is it going up or down? down. And linear means is it a nice straight line? It's doing it nice and straight. It's not like freaking you out and going, whoo, dropping real fast. Because that would be scary if you were in a hot air balloon. Um, what equation in slope-intercept form gives the balloons altitude at any time? What do the slope and y-intercept represent? Okay. Slope-intercept form this time, right? So this is where you have to be careful. They're going to toggle back and forth. You have to pay attention. If it specifies, can we use point slope for our answer here? Uh -uh. It would be easier, wouldn't it? Because we would find the slope and then we just have a point. So you can't. you got to pay attention. Slope-intercept form means you need the slope and you need the y-intercept this time. Okay, how do you find slope from a table? Do you guess? You do not guess. Elvin, what do you do? Perfect. Okay, and so let's remind ourselves this is x1, x2, y1, y2. Um, so our top numbers we subtract. Somebody tell me what we got. Top numbers. Rebecca, you got it. What do I subtract for the top? y2 minus y1 would actually be what numbers? Yep, minus what? Perfect. And then can you do the bottom real quick too? Perfect. Great job. Okay, and so 590 minus 640 should give you a negative number. What do you get? Yell it out. Negative 30. Whoa, what? Negative 50. Okay. All right, 30 minus 10 gives us. All right, does that reduce to what? How about negative 5 over 2? Yeah. Are you noticing they both end in 0? Yeah. Can we divide them both by 10? Yeah, yeah great. Okay, now how do we find y-intercept from our table? So there are multiple ways that you can do this, okay? Um, so we know uh, if you, well, the first thing you can do is look for a pattern, right? But this is going up by 20. And then it goes up by 40. So you can't just work backwards here because there's not a nice pattern. So you got to find, so the y-intercept here, the height isn't starting at zero. You can't use your logic either because it's starting way up in the air. The question is, how high did it start at, right? So remember, what your slope is telling you here is that it's going down, and let's use the 50 and 20 uh, first. It's going down 50 feet for every 20 minutes. So it's going down 5 feet every 2 minutes is what that means. So there are multiple ways you can do this. You can actually, and maybe I have to remind you, use y equal mx plus b. And substitute numbers in for y, m, and x. Do you guys remember doing that? Okay, what number do I use for m? Emma, go. Perfect. Okay, what numbers should I use for y and x? And we've got many choices. They should all work. Keep going, Emma. Uh huh. And then you do. 
Yes. Does everyone see where she got that information? Yeah. Okay. So you can actually use any of the ordered pairs. In this case, none of them look super easy. And yeah, I would have picked that one too because of the 10, right? Um, so let's do that. So five, negative 5 over 2 times 10 is what? What do you get when you do that? Okay, Chris, go. Over 2, which is what? Simplify that. Negative 50 over 2. Positive or negative 25? Positive. Negative 25. Thank you. Okay, and then how do I solve for B now? What would I have to do? When, I'm, when I get to this spot here, I get... So some of you can do this in your head, but let's do it algebraically. What do I do next? Go, Chris. I do, yep. I want to do the opposite of what's on the same side as our variable, so I would add 25. But some of you, yeah, are so mathematically, uh, your brains tick mathematically, and you can look at that and know, oh, then I just add that 25 and do it in your head. So our answer is 600 what? 65 Yep. And so it says, what's the equation? So the equation would be y equals negative 5 over 2, that's our slope, x, plus 665. And our slope is telling us it's going down 5 feet, right, per what? Two minutes, two minutes yep. And what's our y-intercept telling us? 65. Yeah, it's starting its descent. The highest it's got is um, 665 feet in the air, right? Our descents. Have any of you ever actually ridden in a hot air balloon before? You have? Oh, I've never ridden in one before. I've heard it's actually pretty peaceful. Um, it looks scary out there. Okay, if you are online and you have questions, please feel free to email me. Our assignment today is going to be to do 5-4 practice, the evens only.